Welcome to Savage Kitchen. Today, we're gonna be playing with a lot of booze. I have the ingredients for four different cocktails in front of me, and all four of these cocktails are gonna be pink. It's about to be Valentine's Day. There is the Love Potion 2023 challenge going on right now. So I figured we'd come up with four different cocktails, one for each of these particular base spirits, all pink, all delicious, and all with a beautiful chocolate garnish. So let's get into it. So for our gin cocktail, we're gonna be doing something that's a little bit herbaceous and light. For our rum cocktail, we're gonna be playing with coconut rum because it's my favorite. And I know there's a lot of rum aficionados out there and technically coconut rum isn't really a rum. It's a coconut liqueur, uh, but I don't really care. This is delicious. And uh, this cocktail has a nice little bitter twist with a Campari in it and is also pink because we have a theme. Uh, for tequila, we are going to be doing a Chambord Margarita with a white chocolate rim. Pretty excited about that. And then for bourbon, my love, bourbon, we are going to be playing with flavors that are very much the idea of a dark chocolate covered cherry because that's one of my favorite things. So I would like to drink that. <laughs> and then we're also going to garnish it with a dark chocolate covered cherry. So we're covering a lot of ground here. So if you wanna jump ahead to a particular cocktail, I'm gonna mark it down in the chapters below. And also make sure to check out the hashtag Love Potion 2023. I'll put it also in the description and you'll find all kinds of awesome pink cocktails. All right, where to begin? Maybe we start with tequila. All right, so first up, we're going to do our Chambord Margarita. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can get a pink margarita. One of my favorites is actually a prickly pear margarita, which I'll put a link to that up here. But for this particular cocktail, we need to do a chocolate rim. And I just didn't think the flavors of prickly pear and chocolate would really go together. However, raspberry and chocolate is delicious. We're first going to prepare our glass. And what I have here is just some shaved white chocolate, which this is super easy to do, just get a a bar of white chocolate, it helps if you throw it in the freezer for a little bit before you grate it. Grab a microplane or a grater and just grate. Like seriously, this couldn't be easier. And then I just have a little bit of um, simple syrup in a shallow dish here. And I'm gonna spin the glass, making sure to coat all sides. And don't go too heavy because you don't want it dripping down the glass. Like I can't stand the cocktails that have like a painted garnish all the way down the side of the glass because I want to be able to hold it. Like it looks cool, but it's not exactly functional. Okay, there we go. And now I'm gonna dip this in our chocolate shavings. Ooh. <laughs> Starting to look a little scar face. Okay. <laughs> My name is Tony Montana. Okay. I'm gonna set this aside while we make our drink. Ice in the shaker. And then we're gonna do two ounces of a Blanco or silver tequila. And full disclosure, I am not a huge tequila fan. There are people that are aficionados and know a lot more about tequila than I do. I happen to like the Terramana, totally fine for my taste. Um, I prefer a Reposado. I like that uh, barrel aged flavor, but for this cocktail, the clear helps with our color issue. Um, and it really does work nicely with the raspberry. So then we're gonna do a uh, 30 mil, one ounce of Chambord, which is a raspberry liqueur. This is a spirit I rarely play with, but it's actually really good and the color's really pretty. And then uh, 30 ml or one ounce lemon juice. I know a lot of people prefer lime in their margaritas, but I don't like the combination of lime and raspberry. Just it's kind of weird to me, so I prefer lemon juice. And then a half ounce or 15 ml of some grenadine. Now, I know that there's store-bought grenadine, like Roses makes grenadine, and it's very light pink in color and is garbage, quite frankly. Making your own is super, super easy. All you do is take a cup of pomegranate juice, cup of water, bring it to a boil, uh, add a tablespoon of orange blossom water. I like to add a little dash of balsamic vinegar, gives it a little extra zip, and voila, you have delicious homemade grenadine. Also, there's a 
a widely held belief that grenadine is cherry. It's not, it's pomegranate. Uh, so make yourself some grenadine or stay tuned and you might actually be able to get some uh, Savage Kitchen grenadine. All right, give this a good shake. Mm -hmm. All right. Into our white chocolate rimmed glass. The color's really pretty. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Mm. Ooh, that'll do. <laughs> mm. Again, I am just not a huge tequila person, but that's delicious. I, I love that. I think that's really, really good. Super pretty. So yeah, pink margarita. All right, let's move on to our next pink cocktail. Next up, we have our gin cocktail. Now, I love this one. It's pretty delicious, but I love it mostly because it includes yellow chartreuse, and this is one of my favorite spirits. I also love green chartreuse. Uh, the yellow I find to be a touch sweeter, a little more notes of honey, um, and in this cocktail is just so good. Um, so, very simple, four ingredients. We have our gin, we have chartreuse, little Carpano Antica, sweet vermouth, and uh, some pomegranate juice. I think adding grenadine here uh, as a syrup instead of the juice would be a little too heavy. The brightness of just the straight up pomegranate juice really plays nice with these other flavors. And then to garnish, we're going to uh, take a trick from last year's Valentine's Day cocktail, the uh, Chocolate Orange Boulevardier, which was just damn delicious. I'll put a link to that here as well. Um, and we are going to garnish with chocolate covered orange slices. These are easy to make. I think I did a video on these. I honestly don't remember, um, but they're super easy to make, great to have on hand, don't last long. I mean, they last long, but you'll eat them. Um, highly recommend. All right, I gotta check my notes because I don't remember all of these things in my advanced age. <laughs> So we're gonna start with one ounce, 30 mil of gin. Also, I think this would be delicious with maybe a citrus forward gin. Um, I just don't happen to have one on hand, but worth trying out. Let me know if you try that. Almost went right into the glass, Jesus. <laughs> let me save myself from myself. Then we are going to do uh, 45 mil of pomegranate juice, ounce and a half, roughly. And just a little bit of this uh, sweet red vermouth. Mm. Man, I love, this is my favorite vermouth, sweet vermouth. Uh, it's half an ounce, 15 mil. It really adds some, uh, some body and depth to a cocktail though, big fan. And then a whopping 45 mil of green chartreuse. Blair well, wasn't kidding. I love chartreuse. I love it in this cocktail. And it really is the, I think, dominant flavor. All right, let's stir this down. Mm. <laughs> mm. That's really good. Oh, mm. I love this one. It is just... I would say if you have somebody that is new to gin, uh, a gin lover will love this. If you have somebody that is new to gin and wants to start trying gin a little bit more, I think this is also a great introductory cocktail. Oh, so pretty. It's very, uh, it's very red. It's very Viva Magenta, which is the Pantone color of the year. You could just rest this on top of your cocktail. It's not going to stay. <laughs> you could rest it on top of the cocktail, but I actually would like to clip this so it's a little bit more secure. Maybe. There we go. I just don't even know what to call it, aside from delicious. 
Let's give it a taste. <laughs> this might be my favorite one, which I know is odd. I'm a bourbon drinker. I love bourbon cocktails, but this is beautiful, balanced, light, but still has a lot of different things going on. It keeps developing as you sip it. Mm. All right. I really want to drink the rest of that, but let's move on, shall we? Next stop, bourbon. <laughs> bourbon is always my favorite stop. Uh, for this cocktail, we are going to be doing something a little bit different than I have done before. This is my first time playing with using a jam or a preserve as a sweetener. There's an entire classification of drinks called cobblers that use jams as a sweetener. This isn't quite that. Cobblers have a few other uh, characteristics to them. They're usually wine-based. They're usually uh, served over ice with a straw. We're going to be using one of the elements, a preserve, but we're going to be serving this up and straining out all of the uh, pieces of fruit that might be in it. This cocktail fulfills all of my fantasies for a dark chocolate cherry covered bourbon drink. Uh, that's exactly what it is. We're going to be using bourbon, pick your favorite, a maraschino liqueur. There are a lot of different cherry liqueurs on the market. I would choose something that is light. Cherry brandy, a little bit different. That's going to have a lot more bite. And something like a cherry hearing is going to be a lot thicker and heavier and have much more of that molasses component. Uh, so if you can find something like this or actually this, highly recommend. Um, and then we're going to be adding some tart cherry juice. You can find this in pretty much any grocery store. You could be super hardcore and juice your own cherries. Have at it. Uh, I prefer to just buy it. And then we're going to be adding some chocolate liqueur, a uh, creme de cacao. This is, this comes in a light and a dark for our purposes. I chose the light cause I kind of want to keep in that pink and reddish theme and then some chocolate bitters. Let's start with our bourbon. Um, and I've really, I've tried this cocktail many times now, and I found that equal ratios of everything except the chocolate suits my taste just fine. If you want it to be a bit sweeter, I would say maybe add more of the creme de cacao. If you want it to be more spirit forward, go heavy on the bourbon. Nobody's judging. One ounce, 30 mil of bourbon. One ounce, 30 mil of the maraschino liqueur. This stuff's delicious. Same, same cherry juice. This might also be good with pomegranate juice, but I really want that dark cherry flavor because I want it to taste like candy. And then uh, for my palate, I'm gonna dial back on the chocolate just a little bit and do uh, half an ounce. Ah, well, okay. I just had a heavy handed pour there. It's fine. A few dashes of chocolate bitters. Ooh, and our, uh, our cherry preserves. So for this, we're just going to do roughly a tablespoon. So literally take a spoon, just eyeball it. It's fine. Also be sure to taste your cherry preserve or your cherry jam first. Uh, because if it is incredibly sweet, you might want to dial back some. If it's super tart, you might want to add more of another ingredient to tame that tartness. So always taste your ingredients first. Okay, we're going to give this a really good shake because we want to uh, really break down those preserves and incorporate all of our ingredients. Into our coupe. And I love this glass. This is sort of a hybrid of a Nick and Nora and a coupe. And I am going to double strain this one uh, just because I'm going to photograph it and I don't want fruit floating around. Ooh, I love that color. Very pretty. Okay, and to garnish this one, I might have gone like a little extra. I actually made dark chocolate covered cherries. To make your own, simply get some dark chocolate chips, pop in the microwave for about 20 seconds at a clip, stirring in between until the chocolate is nice and smooth. Dip your cherries, set them on parchment. In about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, 
the chocolate will have re-hardened and formed a candy shell. So we're just gonna take tail clip. <laughs> well, that looks kind of weird. <laughs> huh, would two be better? All right, let's see. Maybe two is better. Two is better, it's Valentine's Day, right? Rethinking this, or uh, maybe, maybe two is not better. Oh my God, this is looking like some sort of fucking. Okay. <laughs> mm. I don't know if two really was the way to go with this one. <laughs> In my head, it looks different. Maybe one. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we just go with, oh, well, the stem came off of that one. Uh. Yeah, maybe we just took with one. <laughs> Sometimes I have terrible ideas. In my head, this definitely looked different <laughs> as far as how the garnish would attach. Um, but flavor wise, spot on. <laughs> I mean, I feel like if you're serving this to your love on Valentine's Day, you can maybe just put the cherries like on a plate next to the drink. But here goes, bottoms up. Oh. Mm. I know I said the gin one was my favorite, but I don't know. I might have lied. It's very, very smooth. The tartness from the cherry juice gets tamed by all of these other ingredients. The bourbon is just this like beautiful canvas in the background. The chocolate isn't overwhelming, but definitely present. And I truly, well, I know because I did it. If you play with these ratios, it really transforms the drink every time. So play with it and see where it sits on your palate and what you like. Oh, this is so good. All right. We still have one more to do, but I really want to just drink this. And finally, on our journey into pink cocktails, we have our coconut Campari cocktail. Uh, this is super fun. It is not Campari heavy. So I know a lot of people are Campari averse. You can definitely dial the Campari back. You could try this with Aperol. It won't be quite as pink, but it will be absolutely delicious. But um, I encourage you to try it this way. It's not overly bitter. The sweetness of these other ingredients really balances it out. Um, and you can always add more sweetness later. It's just kind of hard to dial back once you've gone too sweet. Something else to note, this cocktail uses a full fat coconut cream. Now you can use something like Coconut Real, which is already sweetened, or Coco Lopez, also already sweetened. I personally don't prefer overly sweet drinks. So I just go with like the straight out of the can OG coconut cream. Um, you can also make this sweeter by literally adding sugar to it. I would recommend uh, just throwing it in a Nutribullet, which is what this is, because you're gonna need to blend up the cream and the water sort of separate in the can. Um, so I always just blend it up and store it in one of these. And if you want it sweeter, just add in a tablespoon of sugar while you're doing that. So, okay, we're gonna do 45 ml, ounce and a half of coconut cream. The Shipwreck Coconut Rum, if y'all have been with me for a while, you know I absolutely love this stuff. It is fantastic. It makes Malibu taste like garbage. It's just the best coconut rum I've ever had in my life. It is so, so good. If you cannot get Shipwreck where you are, Koaloa also makes a really nice coconut rum. It's not shipwrecked, but it is delicious. Uh, just be a little better than Malibu. If Malibu is all you got, okay. But trust me, once you step over here, you're gonna be like, what the hell was I doing over there? All right, two ounces, 60 ml of our delicious coconut rum. Oh, I'm very, running very, very low and my local store stopped carrying this. I'm gonna have to find another way, bootleg some rum to the desert. Then we're going to do an ounce of creme de cacao. Full ounce, whoa, okay, I went a little heavy there, but we're four drinks in, really? Does it matter? I don't think so. So whatever you use as a mint element, 
taste it first. Again, like that's the overarching theme of everything I do on this channel. Make sure you taste your ingredients first. This stuff is pungent, <laughs> stings the nostrils as they say. The goal here is just to have a hint of mint and then we're gonna reinforce it with our garnish. But don't go overboard here because you don't wanna overpower the chocolate and the Campari. There's a lot happening in this drink. So we're just gonna do 10 mil. Let me be real careful about this. A little bit. There we go. And then half an ounce of our Campari. And this is gonna give us that beautiful pink color and also balance out the sweetness of all of these other ingredients. Oh, lemon juice and then lemon juice. And then so an equal amount, 15 ml or half an ounce of lemon juice. It's gonna add a little bit of brightness. All right, give this a really good shake. And then to garnish this one, we're gonna do two things. One, I'm gonna garnish this with some pretty sad looking mint. All right, you're okay. But I also have some chocolate covered mint leaves that we're gonna layer right in front of this mint. Maybe. Get in your home. I need a spoon. There we go. Ah, perfect. Pretty excited about this one. All right, that looks pretty cute. Aside from my sad mint. Okay, let's give this one a taste. Mmm. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> that's delicious the coconut is the dominant flavor for sure the campari is this undertone of bitter without being overwhelming the chocolate is just a hint and same thing same thing with the mints oh god that rhymes jesus sorry yeah mm. that is delicious I, I want to taste these again. So same thing as the chocolate covered cherries, just find pretty nice robust mint leaves and then drag your mint leaves through the chocolate. Same process as the cherries. And these are delicious. Mmm, mmm, so good. I personally love that combination of mint and chocolate. The thing I will say about making the chocolate covered mint leaves is they don't have a long shelf life. Like you need to be making them shortly before your cocktail because the mint leaves do tend to wilt pretty quickly. Mm, but they're worth it. It tastes really good. It's something really different. You want to impress somebody, give this one a try. Oh my God, it's so good. So there we have it. Four pink eh, and magenta cocktails for Valentine's Day. I hope you give these a try. Let me know what your favorites are. And uh, if you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, all of the things. I absolutely appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers, friends.